very active in the community, and she's a member of the Grand Rapids Lions Club, a fellow, fellow lion. <laughs> um, I, she's also on uh, uh, the list of 50 most uh, influential in Grand Rapids, 50 most influential women in Grand Rapids. Uh, she's also won five consecutive Gracie Allen Awards for Outstanding Show Host. Please welcome Shelly Irwin. All right. I can, I, can, I can come up on the red carpet? This is good. This is good. Yes, first uh, female president of the Grand Rapids Lions Club. They can never take that away after 89 years. What is up with you men? <laughs> and, of course, the first female speaker for this, uh, this go-around. Thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity. First of all, this is probably an inside joke, but what are you reading right now? Uh, um. Make something up. <laughs> the Bible? No. <laughs> Great, what are you reading? Emerson? Good. Where's Kristen Corrado? What are you reading? Inside joke, I'm honored to interview uh, one of you once a month for my um, radio show, the WGVU Morning Show. And yes, the last question I ask is, what are you reading? So usually there's a preparation for that. What am I talking about? I'm talking about passion. I'm talking about taking a risk. And I would like to ask each one of you right now to think about, at age eight, what was your passion? What did you want to do when you grew up and are you doing that right now? A star is born. In elementary school, I wanted to be on the Brady Bunch. In junior high, I wanted to be in film. And on high, in high school, I wanted to be on the radio. And today, I proudly own a Master's of Science in Physical Therapy. So something has changed. And of course, today, I host and produce for WGVU radio and television. So, what's your passion? Think about it. If money wasn't involved, what would you be doing? If you didn't care about risk, what would you be doing? If you didn't worry, what would you be doing? Would you start an orphanage in Kenya? How about starting a library? in Haiti, or an animal shelter right in your own backyard. What would you do if you could, if it was your passion? Well, risk is a biggie. I looked up the definition of risk, and a lot of negative came up, including risk is something or someone that creates a hazard. I don't want to take a risk. I don't want to take a hazard. Beware the obstacle. I ask you, what's your passion? You say, I have this passion. I want to start an orphanage in Kenya, but there are just too many obstacles. Yep, money. Got to fly to Kenya. Family. Just had a baby. That's not going to happen. What about time? It takes time to write up a business plan, to gather your committees, to immerse yourself in your project. Oh, your parents, they wanted you to be a librarian, a doctor, a nurse. You know about the fear of failure. It's real. You don't want to start something that may involve money, time, disappointing your parents, and then fail. Loss of identity. I've always been a librarian. I've always been a school teacher. I've always been a physical therapist. I can't run an animal shelter in my own backyard. And in life, unfortunately, there are no guarantees. So you're rolling the dice. Throw in some quotes. Helen Keller, she was blind, she couldn't hear, and she couldn't speak. But she reminds you that life is either a daring adventure or it's nothing. 
take that to heart. We Googled the word passion. Follow your passion. You'd think there would be a lot of good things about go follow your passion. Life is short. Do it now. Well, I came up with it's really a bad idea. It's one of the worst things you could do, and it's just all bunk. So, I've got negatives with the definition of risk, and I have negatives with the definition of following my passion. So I pretty much put those two negatives together and made a positive out of it. And I say, let's go be passionate, passionate risk takers. I want to follow my passion. I want to take a risk. Let's make this happen. Let me tell you a little bit about my story. From physical therapy to broadcasting, you ask why, as did my parents. Physical therapy is a great pro profession. I am still licensed. You, you can get a job pretty much anywhere, great pay. I enjoyed studying science and math and anatomy. I like school. I was physically active. I like helping people. It was pretty much right for me. But broadcasting, it's tough to get a job. There's low pay. It's very competitive. Sometimes you're told what to do. So why would one want to change careers at age 38? Well, I wanted to follow my passion, so I knew I had to pay my dues. I worked physical therapy in Savannah, Georgia, and Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. And again, I truly loved working with those of you who know what back pain's all about, shoulder pain, et cetera, and I helped a lot of people, but something was missing. I did a lot of community theater on the side, and I did want to be in film, radio, television as a kid. And then my boyfriend broke up with me. So it was time to make a change. I moved back uh, north over to Rochester, Michigan. Got another physical therapy job again, enjoyed it. It was good to my patients, but I was 38 years old and something was bothering me. So I began to pay my dues to follow a career into a job that I knew I would express a lot of passion. I paid my dues. First thing I did is I enrolled in, thank goodness, school called Spex Hauer School of Broadcast Arts in Detroit. My classmates were 18 years old with tattoos and piercings. I paid attention. I did well. It was a nice eight-month program. Throughout that schooling opportunity, which again was hands-on right away, I got an internship at WJR, great radio station out of Detroit but I sure poured a lot of coffee. When the, uh, the switch from 1999 to 2000 happened, I wasn't reporting on it. I was serving you your meal. And again, I was 38 years old. But words that we'll bring up before our chat is over, there's something called persistence and patience. I did get a reporting job. My first reporting job included flight reporting. I would go out to the airport at four in the morning and sit in the parking lot, not mindly, you know, obviously now that would not happen. And then I would actually run into the airport and see which flights were delayed. I would call in that report, John, the following report, that the following flights are delayed out of Chicago, Delta 715, flight delayed 15 minutes to New York. And I was higher than a kite doing those reports. So, again, it's all about paying your dues. Arnold Schwarzenegger has big biceps. I did get an exclusive with Arnold my first summer of reporting. Making a, a long story very short, he was being a spokesperson. Now, this was a long time ago. This was back in 1999. What was he doing in 1999? He was a spokesperson for an inner city uh, child youth camp, and he had come to speak, and they had sent me out as an, an intern to interview Arnold. And after his, you know how we reporters kind of hang in the back and, and ready to pounce on you whenever, uh, whenever we are able, that's the, the tough side of the business, trying to get that scoop. 
Well, he had finished his, his speaking engagement, and he and his entourage started walking out. And I noticed that I'm one of the few that are there to cover the report. So I walk up with my microphone, and his gal next to him pushes me away. And he literally reaches out with that big bicep, pulls me up, I throw the microphone up in front of his face, tell me how you're feeling or some, you know, question. And he gave me a, a report, and obviously I was an exclusive. So Arnold Schwarzenegger has big biceps. I'll end with that. <laughs> to summarize, over the next two years, from about, about 1999 to 2001, I continued paying my dues. There were many positives uh, that came from that opportunity. I was sent to Paris to do uh, auto shows, sent to Frankfurt, Germany to do an auto show where 9-11 happened. So I was in um, Germany on 9-11. That was interesting. I say I, we put in an eight-day work week because I had to continue doing physical therapy. I had to also, uh, I got some experience at the local television station. Uh, I was doing weekend work as well. Obviously, there are no new boyfriends in my life. So I paid my dues, and I never looked back, and I was passionate about what, what I was doing. I went to the news director about the fall, just after 9-11 happened, and said I, I would like some more on-air work, because at this point I was doing a lot of producing for the, the stars, the, the Paul W. Smiths, and et cetera. And he pretty much said, I don't think you have the right broadcast voice. So we cut to the chase, went back to our Specs Howard School of Broadcast Arts, and I said, I will sell my house and move to fulfill the stream. And a couple weeks later, I heard of the opportunity at WGVU, moved within six weeks, and I've been here 11 years and have never looked back and love what I do and love my passion. Enough about me. Race car driver Mario Andretti. There's your take home message. If things seem to be under control, you are just not going fast enough. My parents have a smart car, as do I. So think back to your days of a child as a kid. You took some risks. You climbed a tree. Maybe you still do it now, I hope so. You picked up the mouse or the lizard or the salamander. You took a risk. You dove in the deep end without your hands. Let's ask the experts on following your passion, on taking a risk. You know your books. I'm very honored and lucky to be able to interview a lot of authors. One of the books, when I immersed myself in this career change that I studied was What Should I Do With My Life by Poe Bronson. Just some, some lessons from Poe. Break away from the chorus and hear your own voice. Maybe you're just curious about opening the library in Haiti, or maybe it really is a passion. Be brave, face up to your own realities. You know what's really bothering you, and you know what you can ignore if it's not really the right opportunity. And again, he shares stories. Lawyers can become priests. Catfish farmers can turn into biotech farm. Uh, executives as well, and just other words that you hear along the way. Sure, there's sacrifice, there's courage, and there's commitment. The authors of the book, The Risk Taker, Renee and Don Martin. Where would you find that book in this library? Entrepreneurial strategies for your success. Yes, you are your own entrepreneur when you take risks. We've heard of the word failure, doesn't taint you unless you let it. Yes, we are all gonna fail. Attitude defines altitude. We know about the importance of attitude. If you have a, a stellar resume and you don't have the attitude, you're probably not gonna get hired for the job. And when you believe, you can do anything. Dale Carnegie was honored to take his course and then teach it as a graduate assistant many times. Inaction breeds fear. Stay the course. Be active about your pursuit. Make good use of your time. Back to failing. It's just a stepping stone. We determine our happiness. Everything you do sends a message. These are more along life, long skills, success strategies. 
When it comes to passion, do what you enjoy, and then take a chance. So let's start. Just do it, steal that from Nike. I'm not an expert, so I'm not a Poe Bronson, but you have to start. If you want to start an orphanage, volunteer at your own shelter here. Do you like working with kids? Are you good at, at being a mentor? You all know about the library system, but if you want to open your own, are you good at working with people? Are you good at, at reading? Become an adult tutor right here in our own backyard. And of course, you know about our animal shelters, I hope. Ralphie, Petey, and Leah are in my life because of the shelter, and those are not children. Well, they are. So go walk the dogs at the shelter if that's your, your deal. But let's talk reality. You know, you're not all gonna head to Haiti or Kenya. But you might want to quilt, so take a quilting class. You might want to golf, take a lesson. You might want to be a CEO of a nonprofit. Then get out there and serve on a committee. I heard Marsha Warner's not going away for a long time, so her job's not open. Go for a simple walk and sign up for that 5K. Stay the course, continue to immerse yourself, read the magazines, read the articles, read the, the books about the profession or the passion that you feel burning inside of you. Network, find a mentor. Many times along my journey, I would go to uh, where the anchor was speaking and I would walk up to he, she or he afterwards and ask the silly question. It happened to me and I was sitting next to that particular anchor watching her do her show probably three weeks later, so things do happen when you put your time into that. Healthy you, not here to lecture, but you know what good energy and what it feels like to, to really be on. So only you know your health habits. Take care of yourself as you do what you do or you explore the next part of your life. And find again that mentor or mentee. Also find someone to keep you accountable. If you're serious about it, Ask someone to say, check up on me in six months and see how I'm doing. Avoid the naysayer. I try to surround myself with positive people in anything in life. But if you do have somebody who's really chomping you down, you know what you can do if it's, it's the, the other half. But please try to stay the course. This is fancy. Follow the passion, take the risk, stick your neck out. If I hadn't taken the risk, well, I'd be probably holding on your shoulder right now. And that's okay. Some selfish closing comments. I have a good time when I'm on the radio from 9 to 11. And yes, I just finished my first hour. We've been listening on the map. Been very blessed. And again, um, I'm honored to be able to share stories from 9 to 11. The invitation is always open for interviews. but. I had a good time, and I'm not planning on stopping. Yes, I had the Rockettes in the studio. Yes, I've been in the Grand Rapids Ballet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had Peter Brady and the Brady Bunch in the studio. Also spoken to John Boy, Mary Ellen, Timmy from Lassie. You know the beach. I danced with the stars. Many of the opportunities we get to do as radio, TV people is you do things for a good cause. Arthur Murray put on a dancing for the cause for breast cancer. So that brought me majorly out of the comfort zone. I've had presidents in the studio. <laughs> I swam in the Dead Sea, had a chance when Calvin College brought the exhibit Petra to town. They sent several of us journalists over to the country of Jordan, and I wrote it in the Dead Sea. Been on a billboard, I am the guy, right? I am not. I fed the goats. It's about me, the John Bolson and Cheryl and their stories. Oh, 
She had her earphones on. 